Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm assuming Cammy has finished. I know he did finish his piece early, and I started getting ready. So I'm assuming that Cammy has finished. So I hope you all been enjoying the day so far. I've had a, a wonderful time. I think I've seen just. I think I've seen everybody. Uh, might just have missed a, a couple of minutes of a few people, but uh, I th again, I think it's been a success. And many thanks to uh, to Carl, to Jamie, and to Deal for getting this set up and doing all the the work behind the scenes for getting people involved in this. Um, and hopefully, it's onwards and upwards with the next one. Uh, right, who have I got at the moment? I've got um, I've got Mark, the gentleman turner in, who's going to be EU woman for for me and keep me up to date with what's going on in the chat. Uh, Deal will hopefully be in at some point. He did go and uh, to pick Sinye up from the train station, but the train's running late, so uh, ho I'm hoping he's going to be in for at some point. So I'll put my Mark back in the in the background. Uh, what am I doing tonight? Well, what I've got on the lathe at the moment. Which one was I using? That one. I've got a piece of sycamore on the lathe. It's around about. It's just under 12 inches diameter by about two inches deep. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, some painting on here. Um, I think, like most people know, whenever I'm doing the the virtual crafty, I like to do something a little bit different. Uh, so in this one, I am going to be doing uh, a bit of a paint pour, but uh, a bit of a paint pour with a, a little bit of a difference. Um, I've got a couple of links in the uh, description below. This is to... Uh, three makers or three artists, I should say, who I watch on a regular basis on YouTube. Uh, one of them is Fiona Art. Uh, she's a Slovenian lass who does some really good uh, pin post stuff. Uh, other one is Massa Art Studios. It's a couple of guys who, again, do some really good stuff. And the third one is, I think it's B.R. Turner Artist. Um, but the, the links in to, to all of those uh, so you can pop across and have a look, and you can see where where I get some of my ideas from when I'm using paints. So I'm going to start getting turned, uh, or start turning, I should say, and Mark can let me know what's going on in the chat. No problem. Hello, everybody. Hope you've been having a fantastic day. Right, so far in the chat, we've got Jared the French Turner, Duncan the Curly Turner, Dave O.T., Brian at Hardwood Turning, um, Carl Jacobson, Jim Conlon, Jim, uh, Jim Conlon, Colin Izzard, Dr. Bob, Robert Elliott, um, Malcolm Douglas, Pam from Highland Boxes, Jennifer Stratton from Jennifer Stratton Creations, Greg Thompson, Steve Hale, Vicky Jenkinson, uh, Brent Beecroft, Joe Senior, Stuart Ingrill, Mike Ewell, Minster, uh, Whitworm Paul, and coming down the bottom, Wood Turning by Barry, Robert Dolman, James Crawford. That's it so far. Grand. So I'm just watching. excellent. I'm just marking out for the um for the mortars there, and I'll just get the mortars cut now. The link I've just put in the chat, or I put in the chat further up, is for the Virtually Crafty YouTube channel. If you go to that, you can jump on the playlist and watch the rest of the evening festivities. Coming up after Wayne, we've got the Art of Fire, the glass blowers. And they're always good, good value for money. And following on from them... We've got the troublesome threesome. <laughs> Franco's kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. 
William Kenny's just joined. Hi, William. Evening, William. Right, so I'll put a, a wee bit of decoration in the in the bottom of this. Just turn the speed down to around about 500. And I'm going to use my Robert Sorby texturing tool just to Rex put a bit of decoration in. XB yeah. just joined, my Rex. Let's have a look. Yep, that looks quite nice. I'll just use my one of my carbides just to outline that texture. Now let's have a grand. Turn the speed back up. So I'm running it around about 950, and I'll get some shaping done on this now. Just move my tool rest in a bit. James Garwood to come in. Hi, James. Good evening. And Jay's cabin. John McDonald's just joined. Don't forget, folks, if you've got a question for Wayne about anything he's doing, just a couple of question marks so I can spot it in the chat. And I'll uh, pass it on to Wayne. And if you are going to ask a question, just remember, I'm only wanting questions that I know the answer to. Yeah. Kind of like the quiz, really, isn't it? It is. Dish the bottom of this a little bit. Miss T's coming. Hi, Miss T. Hi, T. How are you doing? Happy, Happy birthday, birthday for the you. other day. Yeah, great minds. Happy birthday. There's a couple of flat spots on this. I'll just see how they're doing. Yeah, still got plenty of room.
just a wee bit of a flat spot there. I'll just round this over a little bit at the top. Uh, Lionel's come in, Natalia De Leo, and Andy H is for turn-ins here. Evening, guys. Miss T's asking, bit of an obvious question, she says, but how deep do you make your mortise? Right, the one I've got, actually, the one I've got in there is quite deep for what I usually do. Let's have a look. That is, that's a load of nonsense. Spirit and Bear are in, and Dara Coolen's in. Hey, and Kez, Phil. Great demo earlier, Kez. Really, really slick. Right, that's about five mil. Um, usually I do them around about three. It's the depth, um, what I tend to find is, is the depth isn't really that important. It's more the, the diameter. As That's long fit. as you get the, as long as you get the diameter right, so it fits perfectly on the jaws. That's the most important thing. Right, I'm just going to do a finishing cut. I'm using my smaller, this is a quarter inch Robert Sorby ball gouge, just to do a finishing cut. And when you're doing a finishing cut, it's always good, if you can, to do it in one complete cut. If you can. Or as Wayne likes to say, in a one -er. Whoops. Or a two-er. Or a two-er. I jinxed you. So Dave Oti's got a question for you, Wayne. Yeah. What's your preferred colouring method? <laughs> Depends on the day of the week. And that might sound a facetious answer, but it isn't. Some days I'll come out here and I like to use wood stains. Other days I'll come out and I like to use paints. It really all depends on the day and how I feel. Um, see, if somebody had asked me that question, Wayne, about you, I'd have said Joe Sonia's. Okay, I, I, yeah, I do like using Joe Sonia's iridescence a lot. Um, but on the other hand, I like using um, intrinsic colours a lot. Um, and I like using uh, chestnut stains as well. It, it's, it really all depends. Right, I, it might be a bit noisy. I'm turning drilly on. Okay. Jared's asked me a question. Um, whenever somebody uses the at symbol and the, the name of the person in the channel, it highlights it for them. But if they don't space it right or spell it the same way that the channel is spelt, it won't highlight. It's, it's just to draw attention to the person that they're speaking about. Douglas Mungham's in. Hi, Douglas. So I started off with 80, then I went to 120, and now I'm going to finish off the sanding with 240. Mm. 
the bottom is being left plain on this so i will be using oh i've got enough left in this tin i'll be using a chestnut sand and sealer just clean some of that dust out of the the texture in there i'll be using go chestnut on. sand and sealer yeah go on mark you can go in 15 minutes mate grand Because I am using paint on this, I'm using acrylic paints, or I will be using acrylic paints on this. I have prepared a blue Peter piece to finish off. And for those of you who don't know what blue Peter is, it's a kids program over here in the UK. And one of the favorite things that they do is when they're making things, or certainly when they used to, not sure if they still do, they always have one prepared which they call, here's one I prepared earlier. So that's what I've got tonight. So I will have a, a finished product tonight, hopefully. Right, so now I'm using Yorkshire Grit. You only need to sand up to 240 when you're using Yorkshire Grit. Because it is an abrasive paste and it does the rest of the sanding work. So the Yorkshire Grit original, which I'm using here, will take this up to the equivalent of around about a thousand grit. So I'm going to use the same piece of paper that I applied it with. I'm turning the lathe down to around about 250. And I'm just going to rub it in. You can actually feel the grit in this. You can feel the abrasive. The abrasive in this is called rotten stone. And it's blended with beeswax, mineral oil, and lemon oil. Um, quick question from Rex for you, mate. Yeah. When you do a five millimeter tenon, five millimeter deep tenon. Yeah. How big a bowl or platter diameter is that good for? Right, this right this size of uh, mortars I've got in here. It's uh, seventy mil, seventy mil. What's that? Oh God, we have a look. Have a look. Bear with me a minute. Seventy mil, about two and three quarter inches. So it's about two and three quarter inches across. I've turned up the 16-inch um, bowls on this. No, sorry, 16-inch platters with that size of jaws. Um, if I was turning something 16-inch by about 7 inches deep, I would be using a bigger set of jaws. Yeah, I know, Vicky. I was showing the differences if you type it wrong or type it right. If you type it right, it gets the name highlighted. If you type it wrong, it doesn't. So I've turned the speed up. I'm going to use a clean piece of paper now. It's still working the grit in. And what happens with the with the, the rotten stone in this is as you're working it in, it breaks down and it becomes finer and finer and finer. And that's how it gets it up to the equivalent of around about a thousand grit. And then if you want to, you could go onto the microfine after this, and that would take it up to the equivalent of probably just over 2000 grit. Martin of Woody's Creations has joined. Hey and Martin. This fit 74 is here. Hello. And you keep on working it in until your paper comes away clean. And that way you know that the grit has done its job. Like there. Oh, watch out. Trouble's in. Hodgepodge is here. Oh, Robert's here. Everybody leave. I'm sure he hasn't got Harry with him. I'm um, sure Rex, he hasn't. Rex asked, have you ever taught uh, in the local schools? Taught wood turning? No. No, a lot of the schools now have actually got rid of all their... Um, equipment um, 
in fact, the, the majority of schools in the UK, when they did have turning equipment, certainly the, the lathes that they have, was a very good maker lathe called a U union graduate. But they all tended to be three phase rather than single phase, which is 400 volt rather than 240, which is the standard that we use over here. And as they would, um, a lot of them were built for schools. When they, when they come up second hand, they're actually quite short, and a lot of people have to put them on risers to get the correct height. So we've got Heidi from Whitehall Pottery in, Harry from Real Hi, Heidi, and Terry Hooper. Have all joined. Evening. Should have turned that speed up a bit. Ah, it's better. Don't forget, folks, if you like what Wayne's doing, give him a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing to his channel. And if you really like what he's doing and you want to support the channel, the link at the top of the chat is to buy Wayne a coffee. Which, uh, instead of super chatting, because YouTube take between 30 and 40 percent, you can buy Wayne a coffee. It all goes back into the channel. Wayne's a very prolific turner. He does three lives a week, shares his knowledge with everybody. Right, that got rid of that dirty mark quite nicely. Now, the way I initially held this is I've got a, a 70 mil uh, force and a bit drill that I use in my drill press. So I can actually uh, just drill a hole in the top of a piece, especially if it's uh, nice and symmetrical like this. Uh, drill a hole in the top of the piece and that just gets held in the jaws as well for doing the bottom so i'm going to go back to sander now because this top needs to be just needs to be flat for what i'm going to do next right, before you do we've got tinkering rocks and paul finley wood turning at home have just joined excellent cheers guys along, along with john from new jersey What's up? Oh, that's fine. <laughs> now, if I was using a um, a sprue, if I was using stains on this, I'd probably take this up to to four. In fact, I probably still will take it up to four hundred. But I'd probably take it up to four hundred because whenever you use wood stains, coloured wood stains on any sort of wood, if there are imperfections in the wood, it doesn't hide them. It tends to highlight them. One quick um, question, uh, Wayne. Yeah. From Misfit74, he says, how does that holding system work, given a force and a bit is not dovetailed? He wants to know because he wants to use the method. Okay. Basically, the um, edge of the jaws just goes into the bottom corner and it holds extremely well. It's just an expansion fit, isn't it? It's an expansion fit. Uh, yes, the jaws are dovetailed, so it doesn't actually hold into a dovetail. It just holds in this bottom corner here. So the edges of the jaws just hold in that bottom corner. But it, I found it very, very secure, and it's especially good if you're doing thin work. Because on thin work, you can't really use a worm screw. On some thin work, depending on how thin you're going, you can't really use a face plate and screws either. You could use a glue block, and glue blocks are exceptionally good using a proper hot melt glue. Um, but I just find this system easy. Uh, just a second, Dave. I've got to shoot for a second because somebody inconsiderately knocking on my door. Can yeah, you all hold your questions? And I'll come back in a sec. So that's 240, and I'll just finish off the sanding with 400. So that's the sanding done, and I'll just give that a, a brush off to get rid of any dust that's in there. And again, I'm going to be using um, cellulose sand and sealer, the spray-on one. And the reason I use a sand and sealer 
uh, on this is that it actually acts like a primer for when you're putting paint on. I'm going to give that a minute to dry. I'll wipe off a bit of the excess. I'm back. Sorry about that. No bother. No bother. So I've wiped off the excess and I'm just going to knock that back with um, a piece of web racks. Now, you notice I didn't knock the sand and sealer back when I did the bottom. I just used Yorkshire grit because Yorkshire grit's an abrasive and that will knock it back anyway. So I'm just going to knock any roughness out of this. So I've got a nice smooth surface to work on like that. And now we'll come to the good bit. So what the time are we on, Mark? 26 minutes in. Grand. 34 minutes to go. Right. Sorry, that was something I've never heard before. A local councillor going round, knocking on doors, thanking people for voting for him. Excellent. Did you vote yeah. for him? No, I didn't even know there was an election. <laughs> 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 I did tell him, excuse me, don't you know Wayne the Wood turn is on? <laughs> right. This way, this way. Perfect. Is that Perfect. okay? Anybody, everybody say that right. Yep. What I'm using today is acrylic paints that I have thinned down with, um, God, what's it called? Flow medium. I've thinned them down with flow medium. So it is going to be like a pore. So I'm going to start off with white. The white is going to be the base. Just give it a, a quick mix up. And this is fairly thin, this is, so it should give a, a fairly decent coverage. Now, if anybody is going to try this, you're probably going to end up waiting about a week before you can return the dish, because that's how long it's going to take to dry out because this paint goes on fairly thick. Don't worry about getting it on the underneath. I have actually finished that off. So in fact, I haven't finished it off. I just used Yorkshire grit. I didn't use any wax on there. My mistook. It's like being a kid, this is. It's brilliant. You can, just have a mess, you can just have a mess about and do what you want. Douglas Mungham was saying, Mark, did he say to apologise to Wayne Wood Turner? Yeah, I told him off. So get on and put YouTube on. <laughs> But hurry up, because it'll be finished. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, the paints I'm using, or the coloured paints I'm using, they're called Script. And um, I think these are made by Cheapo, Cheapo Productions. Oh, no, they're from, well, they, yes, they are, because they're from Aldi. So I've got a nice blue, which is a bit metallic-y. So I'll, but what I'll do, I'll do four pores on this. So I'll do a blue. And what I tend to do, I'll try to do it towards the outside of the top because you're going to dish out the middle and you don't want to really lose any of the paint. So I'll put some blue there. And I'll put some blue on this side. Stephen's in, the wood dude. Evening, Stephen. And what I'll do, I'll start off doing 
with this other colour, which is a sort of light purple, metallic-y type colour. James Garwood is in as well. Hi, James. Put that there, and then I'll stick some on top of the blue. And I'll put the blue on top of the violet. Doesn't matter about getting any drips anywhere. You can always get them covered up with what I'm going to do next. I think three layers will be enough. I love the way you think outside the box. This is not me thinking outside the box. This is me watching our channels on YouTube. But applying it to wood turning. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I do that. Right, now there's a couple of methods you can use for the next part. I made uh, a roller. I wouldn't turned wooden handle, turned wooden disc with a groove in there, and I glued in an O-ring, and that swivels. But what I found with this is because of the how thin the um, the o-ring is it doesn't leave a very good trail so the ones i was watching on youtube use a marble so that's what we're going to use tonight so i'm going to pop it into the center of that one and what we're going to do is just have a bit play and have a bit roll about of this <sighs> and then move on to the next one <sighs> Go through that one just like that. Move on to the next one. Sorry, I'm laughing because I'm so impressed. On that, and then move on to the last one. Go through that and bring it around. Gerard would like to know if those colored paints were acrylic as well. Yes, they are all acrylic. That's it. Take the marble off. Get a piece of... I should have put gloves on. I always forget to put gloves on when I'm painting. Alan Matson's in. Good evening, Alan. So, let me just get rid of everything out of the way. Stick me cling film back over these paints to keep them nice and wet. Richard RJK Spinning Woods in. Hi, Richard. And I'll see what I'll do once I've cleaned these paints out of the way. I'll lift the piece up, end up getting paint all over the places again. Ah, oh, Alan Matson is Misfit 74. No, oh, right. So right, so <laughs> let's um, bring that up. So there you go, guys. How's that look? Mate, that looks awesome. So that's the. Um, the paint pour using the marble to get the effect. I'm just going to pop this out of the way over the other side of the workshop and I'm going to bring the blue Peter piece in. Now, this is my, I think this is the third practice piece I've done because the first two didn't turn out that well. Um, this one, this one turned out not that bad. I'll just get. Okay, you've got wet paint on that board. Yeah, I know. It's an artist's palette. It'll do. I just didn't want you to get it on the bottom of the practice piece. Move that out the way. Now, the practice piece I've done, I only did three pours on this one. But that's the, the practice piece I did. It has had a coat of lacquer, but stupid me did the coat of lacquer earlier on. So I'll probably end up getting dust all over the top of this. It's no big concern, really. It is a practice piece. Uh, uh, change camera. <laughs> change camera. So that's it. Um, I'm just going to mark... Bring me to the rest back a little bit. 
just want to mark up where I'm going to start the dish from. Lawrence Bacacha's in. Round about there. There we are. Loads of really good comments in the chat, Wayne. Grand, thanks, guys. Right, so here we go. Get this quickly turned. Oh, God, helps if you tighten the tool rest, win. Sorry, Mark, mister. Jeff Hess has just joined. Good evening. I don't know what I've done to this gouge. But it's not cutting the way it used to. Where's me biggie? There it is. Plenty of time, mate. 37 minutes in. All right. Bear with me a second. I sharpened the other gouges. I didn't think I'd be using this one. Misfit74 is asking, has, he, has anyone here made a cane before? He's making one for a friend. It's out of mahogany, and he wonders if anyone has any pointers. Never made one. Sorry. Scott's in. Hi, Scott. Hi, Scott. Another quick sharpen. Oh, that's better. Obviously, I use a walking stick. I, I looked into making walking sticks. The only thing I could say that I found out was you have to make sure you have a, a, a taper from the top to the bottom because that actually adds strength to the walking stick. If you have it the same diameter all the way down, it can flex too much and the taper actually adds strength. But that, that's all I can give you. I'm afraid. I'm sure you can actually buy kits so it can be done in two pieces. Yeah, I think um, Procraft or Turner's Retreat do them. Jared's asking. Go on, Jared. Um, do you think a fork would do an effect on this paint? Yes, like, um, like I was doing pastry. You know, with the yeah. Um, I was actually showing Mark uh, before we started. Jane had been out to the range the other day and actually brought me a load of different types of rollers in for for kids doing painting. Um, so I am going to be trying them in the near future, probably with Joe Sonia's. Mr. 
Misfit, Misfit, I know it sounds obvious, mate, but there are probably hundreds of videos on YouTube with people making walking sticks. Great place to learn. Right, I've got a little mark just under the, the rim there, so I think I'll just highlight that. Florida Bearded Woodworkers just joined. Hello. Go for it, Alan. 41 minutes, Wayne. Grand. Not be long. That was 80. One twenty. Two forty. Clean out that groove. Clean off any dust off the top. Do the inside with sand and sealer. And back to doing the grit again. Turn the speed back down around about 250. If your lathe will go to 250, if your lathe only goes down to 500, start at 500. Increase the speed, clean piece of paper. Don't forget, folks, if you like what Wayne's doing, give him a thumbs up, comment on the video. If you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing. He's one of the best wood turners in the UK. He does three lives a week. I wouldn't go that far, Mark. A lot of people would agree with me. <laughs> I was going to be arrogant then and say, don't argue with me, man. <laughs> I know, I know you like doing that. And also at the top of the chat, there's a link for buy me a coffee for Wayne. So if you like what he's doing, you want to support the channel, help him provide continued content, buy the man a coffee. Right. Now, I'm not sure if um, The Art of Fire has actually got a link in in the virtual crafty. I know they're having problems putting the link up because they do everything on the phones. They were having problems putting the, putting the link up. I'll have a quick look. If they've got one, I'll throw it in. Right, I'll take this out. I'll come and have a seat, change the camera, and then I can show you that uh, finished piece. Um. Or do you want, well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll put the overhead back on, the overhead zoom, and I'll show you the the bit that I did the painting on again, just so you, you get an idea of what that was. No, they haven't got a link up. JP's back. 
Hello, J. Pardon me. Hello, JP. So that's the one that I've done tonight. The paint work that I've done tonight. Put this back again. JP's just given me the link. So there you go. There's Excellent. the link to the Fire. That's their YouTube channel. Go there straight from this. When they start, it'll pop up. Thanks, JP. Change camera onto the main camera. And this is the piece. This is the Blue Peter piece that I've just finished off tonight. So I actually did this one. Uh, I painted this on Monday morning. Um, so, um, so I was just about guaranteed it was going to be dry to get finished off tonight. Brilliant. We've had a super chat from Misfit74. Thank you very much, Alan. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, what are we on? Oh, we're only on quarter two. Um, any questions? I'll do a five minute Q and A if you like, uh, and then I'll give people a chance to get across and try and find out a fire for them starting at nine o'clock. Thank you, Pam. Comment. JP said blue Peter piece, there's no sailboat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I didn't use any fairy liquid uh, jars either. <laughs> Other products that's are a, available. That's that's a real that's actually quite a fun fun way of doing that, that piece as well, isn't it? Using it the is. Like yeah, using the mark. I um, I think I'm not too sure, but I think it was uh, BR Turner Art um who Maybe did it first. He did all the steel ball bearing, and then Fiona Art quickly picked it up, and uh, Mass Art Studios uh, followed on. Right, Dr that, that, Drilly's been used tonight. Um, I'm just thinking, what what kind of brushy, effect? Do you think? Brushy, here. Brushy's here. Oh yeah. What kind of effect do you think you'd get if you used a tennis ball? Because it's furry. Um, I don't. Do you think know, that um, would be too splot too splotchy? No, no, it would probably work, but it would probably have to be a bigger platter that you did it on. Right. Yeah. Um, I was thinking a golf ball may be quite interesting, but because of the thickness of the paint that's on there, you'd probably lose the golf ball effect. I'll tell you what, my work as well because they're rubber a squash ball. Yeah. Basically, just Thanks, take guys. the idea and have a play with it, didn't it? Well, that's it. I mean, you don't have to use a marble. There's other types of uh, paint pours you can do. If you search out uh, paint pour on or paint pour art on uh, YouTube, you'll get thousands upon thousands. Question um, from Alan. What finishes to avoid after using abrasive paste? None. Don't avoid any of them. Let them, um, yeah, let, let, give the, uh, what I would recommend is give the piece a day uh, to get, uh, let the what's left of the grit dry and you should be able to use any finish you like over the top of it. You can use oil, you can use wax. Wax tends to be the most popular one, but you can use lacquer as well. Someone's asked, what, what word was it, please? It's sycamore. What I try to do when I'm doing colouring is use a fairly plain piece of wood, so a uh, beech, sycamore. Uh, I will use ash, but sometimes even using paint, the grain of the ash will uh, will show through. Stuart Ingram had a good idea. You could try using a pine cone. You could try quite, using a pine cone. That would be quite random as well, wherever it goes. Yeah, and you could um, actually with a pine cone, if you drilled in either end, you could actually make it so it rolls. Yeah. Or a dried corn cob. Dried corn cob, yeah. Either either eaten or uneaten. <laughs> uh, 
Yes, Robert. A, a small, a small brush would work. What I would say, though, it uh, it would need to be um, quite a stiff bristled brush. My beard would be no good because it's too soft. Wayne, you could also use a, a beaver's tail, like a palette knife, to spread the paint. You could, yes. <laughs> Harry's just run from the workshop. <laughs> Okay, guys, I'll leave it there. Um, I'll give everybody a chance to go and have a, a comfort break. Get themselves sorted. Get yourselves a drink, uh, whatever. Use a toilet, whatever. Um, and come back to watch uh, Art of Fire. Cool. <laughs> so Dr. Bob tried something similar. Left it out overnight to dry on his bench. And in the morning, there was mouse footprints all over it. That's a good effect. Yeah. Right, guys, I'm going to end it there. I'm going to press the button. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming along. Uh, much appreciated, and uh, I'm pleased I got a, a finished piece done, and um, I hope you've learned something. Um, that Although a lot of artists do this on canvas, it can be done on wood, and it can be turned into a finished piece as well. So I will end that there. I'll press the button. Press the button, Wayne. It's up there. Hi, everybody. Now, oh.